thank you to Liquid IV for sponsoring this video. More on them after the reaction. Citizens of the Reject Nation, I am so excited to be here with all of you to be watching Mad Max Fury Road and more than likely not for the reason that you are probably thinking. Please allow me the opportunity to explain what I am talking about. I'll level with you. Honestly, I did go watch Mad Max Fury Road opening night in the theaters. The problem is, and some of you may know this, Greg back then had a, a, a real uh, habit of uh, absorbing leafy greens morning, noon, and night. I didn't know how to function without it. Very specific phase of my life. This was not just normal leafy greens on that particular day. I thought, you know, it'd be fun. Let me take a really powerful gummy that day. And this has happened with me with a couple of films, one of them being Transformers Dark of the Moon. Very similar experience. What happens when this goes down? This is a big regret of mine for being a film lover and today I get to do this properly is because when I am on something that's strong, especially back then, the last thing I'm doing is paying attention to what's in front of me. My mind is like in another dimension. Fantasy of what is ever on my mind feels like a reality. And the last thing I'm doing is being present. And the few images that I really caught glimpses of, the seconds I maybe caught of paying attention just felt like a nightmare. I fell asleep a couple of times during Mad Max Fury Road. That has been a pain of mine because in conversation with so many film lovers, I'm in an LA, this is film lover capital out here. I kind of just rely on everyone's talking points as I don't want to just explain all that to them. I mean, sometimes I do, but I keep it really brief. I'm assuming that's a reference. I saw once under some extreme duress. stuff. <laughs> you just say, yeah, great action, great practical effects, and it's really Furiosa's movie. It's like the same shit people always say, right? And then, of course, there's like pop culture things that have constantly been in the zeitgeist, like a Morton Joe's mask. What a lovely day, that, that moment. The guy with the flame guitar, like things that have just permeated for years. But when it comes to what actually happens in here, you know, the beats of the movie, I have no idea. Now, originally, here was my plan. Because I'm going to I'm gonna watch Furiosa in the theater. So don't expect like a reaction from, uh, from home. So I'll do a review for it. So I just wanted to watch Mad Max Fury Road on my own time with all this in mind. And then I sat down and think about it. I'm like, I don't even know what happens at the end of this movie. I don't even know what the outcome is for these characters. I don't even know what the end result is for Furiosa at the end of this movie. I thought, screw it. I'm not going to do this alone. I'm going to do this with a camera pointed at me, with all of you, let you in on the proper viewing experience of this. Not on a gummy, that's for sure. Thank you guys for letting me explain that reject nation. I'm so excited to finally cross this off my bucket list. So guys, leave a like on this video. Please subscribe and click that notification bell to get notified when uh, a reaction is up on here that might pique your interest. I'm sure one of the other hosts will probably do a video on demand reaction uh, for Furiosa, but I want to watch in the theaters as I owe it to myself. Prepper, thank you for helping to set it down these highlights, making us look good. Full length reaction watch along where you sync up with your own copy. That is available for our super sexy rejects at our Patreon page. I love you guys so much. You are an absolute wonderful supporter of our channel. When you sync up with us, it is like I'm just in the room hanging out with you the entire time and we also cover several things over the exclusive highlights and watch alongs included i know that was a long intro but i'm excited to really get the deets off my chest on that thank you for allowing me the time let's do this properly people i'm actually like nervous but excited i don't know anxious maybe not nervous my name is Max. My world is fire and blood. Nice. It's the oil, stupid. Oil wars. We are killing for gasoline. gasoline. I've seen the first two Mad Max movies, though, that's for sure. Once I was a cop. Yes. As the world fell, each of us in our own way was broken. It was hard to know who was more crazy. <laughs> Me. Cool. Or everyone else. Hello. Girl's voice. Where are you? Oh, weird. Here they come again, worming their way into the black matter of my brain. They cannot touch me. Oh my god, he's eating it. <laughs> they are long dead. Yeah. Wow, there's like sound design for every little movement. 
Guys, I'm so happy right now. I am the one who runs from both the living and the dead, hunted by scavengers. Oh, I love that detail, the gasoline just pouring on him. So I exist in this wasteland. <sighs> Reduced to a single instinct. Survive. Survive? Survive, yeah. You know why this makes me so happy is because I've never been able to find someone to watch this with me for their first time. So the fact that I get to at least share this with you guys is just, you know, this proper do-over is making me so happy. Road warrior run down. Multiple scars. Oh, negative. Wow. Such frantic editing. This shit sped up? Damn. Incredible upper body strength. Max, is that you? you, Max? The precision of the frenzy is very impressive. Whoa. Oh shit. Oh, that's awesome. So overt horror is an element of it. Like, I know there's always been something kind of like unsettling about the Mad Max world, but. Metal. Metal. I don't know if these guys are mutated or painted. Those like warts on him are really big. See, I never knew that. I thought it was just a mass. It's an actual breathing apparatus. That makes sense. There are tubes there. <laughs> Once again, we send off my war rig to bring back gasoline from Cash Town and bullets from the bullet farm. Very inventive titles. I salute my Imperator Furiosa, and I salute my Half-Life War Boys, who will ride with me eternal on the highways of Valhalla. This architecture design is, it's just like futuristic apocalyptic Skull Island. It's coming, get ready. Those bugs are a nice touch. Water is always the ultimate resource. <laughs> what a way to make yourself a god. Literally shower them with it. Make them desperate for it. Ah, uh, what a tease. Do not, my friends, become addicted to water. It will take hold of you. Don't become addicted to water. The body's made up of so much water. More than just, it's logically not sound, okay? It just dawned on me why I kind of avoided rewatching it or giving it another shot was because of the feeling that just hit me right now. That I robbed myself of an experience. It hit me right now. <laughs> Self-discovery in the moment. I got a war boy running on empty. Hook up that pool life. Careful, it's a universal donor. What does a universal donor mean? Like his blood type is good for everyone? Boss, we're not going to gas town? We're heading east. I'll pass it down the line. Huh. Go. What's going on? We're heading east. Why? I don't know. That's the order. Wow, 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 wow. The hell's going on here? She's going off road into hostile territory. Why would she do that? To What's he doing with like farming these women? Splendid and Harrod. Our babies will who killed the world. So the babies are being bred. They are not your property. Miss Kitty. You cannot own a human being. Sooner or later, someone pushes back. Uh, press uh, is she taking them? She didn't take them. 
I begged her to go. Lady, you took so long. A long way from you. That confident march that he would just charge in knowing she wouldn't shoot. Furiosa, she took a lot of stuff from me, Morton Joe. What stuff? <laughs> He's prize breeders. He wants them back. Got a hand laid on him. By my deed, I honor him. V8. What an evolution of the world. That's my wheel. I'm driving. Are you already a corpse? I just need a top up. There's no juice. time. We take my blood back and strap into the Lancer's perch. Oh. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die historic on the Fury Road. <laughs> Here's your blood back. Right there. So this society just feeds off the bodily fluids of other people? That was fascinating ADR. <laughs> oh, that's a cool reveal. That is pretty cool. We got vehicles from the Citadel. They're barring planes. They want reinforcements from Gastown and the Bullet Farm. It's a detour. How do they hear her? Huh, look like Tuscan Raiders. I really love the handling of reveals of what to like do close up on. You pay attention to something someone's saying and it pulls back and you see the spikes. It's like how they did the drums. You hear the music. Then it shows that there's actually people drumming instead of cutting two to get it all at once. Should we turn it around and run them into our backup? No, we're good. We fang it. Fang it. I feel like I'm watching Jennifer's body all over again. Just terminology I don't understand. Oh, shit. CGI blending is seamless. Ooh. Oh, cool. Oh, I got nipple chills. Sweet. God, stuntmen deserve Academy Awards. Oh. <laughs> huh, never mind. Eh. That is commitment. How do they do some of these shots? I, I can't tell sometimes when it's CGI, unless it's like something that's super close. A lot of times I can't. Oh, they're all just in there. They're stowed away. That makes sense. And then they met. <laughs> awesome. We can't You! You! I love how this is all just happening to Max. Yikes! What beautiful destruction. She thinks she can lose us, Dad. She thinks we're stupid. She thinks she can lose us in there. Wow. We're just going to keep saying it. The way reveals are handled. Did not, you didn't even know this was there. Bang it! Bang it! Just sink your teeth into it. We need counterweights. Get the blood bag down the back. This guy's one job is to literally jam out. It's so funny to know she's in the Fast and Furious franchise now. Ah! Woo! 
What a visceral experience. Just zooming into another world. Amazing. It's all because even when it's CGI, it just feels like it's all so much CGI, but it feels intentional and, and the What a lovely day! You said the line, you gotta be quiet for the line. Like there's a charm to it when it's uh, even when it's obviously CGI, you know? I am the man who grabs the sun. This is it's a good mantra, he's Jeez. Whoa, he's going in black and white. What the hell? Wasn't there a black and white edition? I remember seeing a cover for that. There's so much color here. Why would you want to lose it? I live. I die. I live again. Yowza! Whoo! You know what's so interesting about this is we're about a half hour in and we haven't really done much to, to like get to know the characters in a traditional movie format at all. We're just kind of getting to know them via through the struggle and, and so much of the uh, everything around the movie is a character, you know? It's very it's a very different kind of film because normally the thing I'm harping on is like, oh, I'm not investing in the characters, but there's so much other things feel like a character. It's like learning via through their actions is the way I would put it. Wait, is that all of Nicholas Holt's screen time? I love how aggressively feral he is. I got a lot more in my noggin about, you know, Mel Gibson's portrayal, which was a lot. He would be scared, you know, it felt like a real guy, but he was definitely seemed like he played it like cooler. And, and uh, he's so savage, uh, Tom Hardy's version. It could just be circumstantial, too. Ooh la la. So angelic. I think I remember hearing that. It said Zoe Kravitz is in this? We're not going back. Just ask for the keys. Or ask for help. Water. Oh, she's preggers. <laughs> <laughs> Used to do it when I was a kid. Oh, he's alive! <laughs> well timed. He's not your enemy. <laughs> Start off so antagonistic with them. Whoa. <laughs> Great detail. I love the amount of uh, misunderstanding happening here. Ouch. Great. Glory me, Bloodbag. We snagged her alive. It's gonna shred her. Jay. Hey, hey. <laughs> For anything, I want to drive the war rig. Knock him unconscious. That's my jacket. <laughs> sure, then you can ask for more than a jacket. We're going to the green place. <laughs> Wait, is your name? Yeah, you, you deserve it, man. You We're going to the green place and many mothers. He nicked her. No, Max. How does it feel? It hurts. You want to get through this? Do as I say. What? Pick up what you can and run. 
He's just straight up abandoned that. This character is meant to just have the worst luck, huh? Kill switches. I set the sequence myself. This rig goes nowhere without me. <laughs> you can get it. <laughs> Not without them. So we wait. You know you're gonna be taken back, dude. You're relying on the gratitude of a very bad man. You've already damaged one of his wives. How grateful do you think he's gonna be? One of his wives? There's wives? I'd say you got about a five minute head start. You want that thing off your face? <laughs> Appreciate the dark comedy. Oh, dude. You're gonna suffer. Of all the legs you had to shoot, that one was attached to his favorite. Well, she's not going back to him. The gas town boys. <sighs> Don't damage the goods. What do you see? A lot of cars. Polecats. Flamers. And there's the people eater himself. We're coming to count the cars. I like how everything is named exactly what it is. We're dragging something up back. I think it's the fuel pod. I'll go. The framing of the wives is really cool because it juxtaposes so much against everyone else's like dirt and grit. And it says a lot about the kind of character Morden Joe is that he would keep them in such angelic quality. I don't feel like I'd survive in this world. I don't know jack about cars. Can't even change his tire. There's something familiar to me about this shot. Never mind. It's a cool reveal. <laughs> Him. No unnecessary kid! No. He's just a kid at the end of his half life! No, I live, I die, I live again! Is there a redemption for him? You got more friends. Bullet farmer! They're coming from the bullet farm! <laughs> yes, bullet farmer! They're coming from the bullet farm. He's a lying old man. I am awaiting! You're an old man battle fodder! Killing everyone! <laughs> I just love the way he looks at everything. <laughs> this dude is just getting tossed around. I made a deal up ahead. Safe passage. I don't know if it's still any good. Get back in the hole. Keep the hatch open. I need you here. You. You stay. You know what it is? His voice just sounds so... Like bass heavy in a in, in a microphone. It's so crisp. I wonder if that's very intentional. Cause it's the way his sound design of his voice is stands out from everyone else's voice. It's, it's currently a bit like I like it, but it's also at the same time kind of a nitpick of mine because it kind of pulls me out every time. What do I call you? Does it matter? Well, not there, so I'm totally fine there. <laughs> Maybe I'm just in my own head. When I yell fool, you drive out of here as fast as you can. This is the sequence. One, one, two, one. You have it? Wow, what a fascinating way to do character. Character is always the first thing I look like. It's a really interesting way to do characters because you're seeing that Furiosa's only goal is keeping them safe. And just like 10 minutes ago in the film runtime, she was so, she was like ready to kill this guy, you know? And now she's given over the, the password. Like she knows she, that he's the only one she can trust, but she's not saying that. It's all in like the subtext of everything else. And you're watching like Max and her slowly learn to trust each other. I don't ever hear people talk about the characters other than like, you know, iconography or their looks and stuff. So it's, it's really cool to kind of pick up on that watching this. And it's also cool in the see Charlize Theron in this role where one of these wives, I'm like, sure, early part in Charlie Theron's career, she could have easily been one of the supermodel wives, but this year embody this, you know, because she's a very, she's a model and beautiful actress. It's all here! 3,000 gallons of gasoline, just like you asked. You said a few vehicles in pursuit, maybe. We count three war parties. Yeah, well, I got unlucky. <gasps> oh, you got to be kidding me. Jesus. What incredible stunt work, man. Let's start over. 
<laughs> it just feels like that is such a great detail with them playing the music, you know? Like this old school war, old school like militia. All this for a family squabble. Healthy babies. Uh oh, they be losing trust. Those zoom in shots where they get become center of frame. There is so much happening, right? Oh my god, there's like <laughs> chambers are being emptied in front of the bot. So much details. The usage of elements. Look at that amazing teamwork you guys got going on. <laughs> Great shooting. Ooh, nipple chills number two. Feel the flames. You know, you get that like sense feeling for a second where the, the warmth kind of just hits you. It's like this moment, this moment's so great to me because you've seen like these heroes rising together, unlikely duo of heroes with Max and Furiosa. Smart call. Wow. If I get on the rig, there's a way inside. I'll pike her in the spine. Keep her breathing for you. Robotica, go. Stop the rig. Return my treasures to me. And I myself will carry you to the gates of Valhalla. This poor kid. Eternal, and That's the name of the Blu-ray I saw, Chrome Edition. Yes. Best Buy, I remember you. There's an element of screwball comedy with Nicholas Holt. Yikes. Yo, you're gonna get all the women killed. Ouch! Oh, those chains you could cut pretty easily. Oh, oh my god, I was like, they just killed the pregnant woman. <laughs> Holy shit. No! <laughs> what? Turn the rig around. Go back for her! <laughs> I really, <laughs> I fell for it, <laughs> and then they got me. The movie did exactly what they intended. We need inventory. I want you to match every gun with its bullets. Just keeping you alive, guys. We need someone down the back. I'll go. No, I can do it. Who is that? She looks very familiar. What are you doing here? He saw it. He saw it all. This guy. My own blood bag driving the rig they killed him. No, oh, you can't go back, homie. I was awaited in Valhalla. They were calling my name. I should be walking with the immortal, no feasting with the heroes of all time. Homie. Good transition from the chrome on his mouth to that. Fascinating night lighting. The minds of the road. That guy must be so tired from playing guitar. His fingers must be bleeding. Your girl is breathing her last. What about the child? What cool lighting. Another month could have been your viable human. Was it a male? Yeah, he won Alpha Prime. <laughs> That's brutal. Doesn't even care about the woman. There's high ground just beyond that thing. He means the tree. <laughs> I can do this. I know this machine. He does. He's a rev head. You've got two left. There are sometimes he does kind of look like Mel Gibson. I love that. They don't even have, he just has to give it to her. They don't even say anything. Don't breathe. Ah! Gotta use a winch. Run the street thing. Hold up a flare. I am holding a flare. Close. It's right in front of your eyes. Ah! Oh, I lost some teeth too, huh? It's like some Sin City shit. Dude. 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 Let the tree bring life. Ah! 
Feels like a moment out of Saving Private Ryan or something right now. Cool amount of energies between the three leads. How are the engines? Very hot and real fast. You need to take the war rig off a click down the track. What if you're not back by the time the engines are cooled? Why well, you keep moving? He's a good guy. The struggle is very real. Signs of death. It's the most badass road warrior. Are you hurt? You're bleeding. That's not his blood. What is this? It's mother's milk. Oh, jeez. What a nightmare. It's okay. Sleep. Get some rest. The amount of uh, empathetic strength the women have in this movie. How do you know this place even exists? I was born there. No. Nope. Why'd you leave? I didn't. I was taken as a child, stolen. And then we're gonna see that origin story. Now that I drive a war rig, this is the best shot I'll ever have. And then? They're looking for hope. What about you? Redemption. Cut to him. Time for redemption too. What's that? I remember something like she must have been in edibles when she was taken. Oh, that's bait. Stay in the rig. I am one of the Bumalini of the many mothers. My initiate mother was KD Con Cannon. I feel like I need to remember all this. I am the daughter of Mary Jobasa. My clan was Swaddle Dog. Beautiful. Are you luring everyone here? With something in the eyes. Perhaps it is Jabasa's child. This is our Furiosa. Oh, that is her actual name. I thought she might have been renamed that. Who are they? They're reliable. They helped us get here. I just realized they're all women here. <laughs> just put that together. Where did you find such creatures? So soft. This one has all her teeth. <laughs> That's usually what I do when I meet women. I can't wait for them to see it. Say what? The green place. But if you came from the west, you'd passed it. Ooh. A creepy place with all the crows. Oh. Oh, no. I was going to say, like, why did we just... It was so brief. I didn't understand the point of that. Like, cool, cool aesthetic. We're the only ones left. No. Oh, I just got hair stood up there. I, I know this shot. She falls on her knees. Remember that in the trailer a bunch. Yeah, this one right here. You having a baby? Warlord Junior. Gonna be so ugly. Warlord Junior. You kill people with that, do ya? Killed everyone I ever met out here. Headshots. All of them. Snap right in the medulla. Nice. You have to survive. If we leave the rig here and load the motorcycles up with as much as we can, we can maybe ride for 160 days. One of those bikes is yours, fully loaded. I'll, I'll make my own way. You know, hope is a mistake. Oh, this guy. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll uh, you'll go insane. But he cares. Where are you? Where are you? Help us. You promised to help us. <laughs> is the little girl's daughter? Come on, Pa. Let's go. If you keep saying Max, where are you, Max? This is your way home. We go back. What's there to find at the Citadel? Green. And water. There's a ridiculous amount of clear water. Dude, Max. <laughs> I suggest we go back the same way we came. So we take the war rig and we charge it right through the middle of them. We can decouple the tanker at the pass. Shut it off behind it. So I got so much dialogue. And how exactly do we take the Citadel? If we can block the pass, all that's left are his war pups. And war boys too sick to fight. And we'll be with Nux. He'll be bringing us home, bringing back what's stolen as he's meant to. Very interesting. I, I completely misunderstood. I thought he was telling them, like, just go back home. Oh, but he's saying to take it. That's really interesting. Look, it'll be a hard day. But I guarantee you that 160 days ride that way, there's nothing but salt. At least that way, you know, we might be able to be together. Together. Come across some kind of redemption. Save them together. Come across some kind of redemption. He's got a very interesting voice. Ew. Warring! I love the designs. They don't even explain so much of it. They're going back to the Citadel. They know it's undefended. They have demonstrated that Immortal Joe's a smart guy. How 
How would you take them on, though? I just have no way of grasping how you would defeat them, even if you're going through the canyon. She said she was gonna shot. Woo! Whoa! Wow. I guess they're just gonna do it this way. Engine one is gone. Two's about to blow. Are you a black star? Uh -huh. All right, engine one now. You and me, fifth wheel. We'll unhook the tank. I just don't get how you, there's so many of them. Cool. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, I liked her. She was cool. Oh, she survived. Turn around. I mean, it's a damn good finale because I'm here as an audience member going, I have no idea what they would possibly do to overcome this situation. It just seems so impossible. She's such a badass old lady. Oh no! The editing on this is so well done because you can, you can still maintain, you can keep up with everything in spite of how crazy it is. Oh, that was cool. Wow, great work. No! Dude, everyone from there is getting killed off. Are you okay? Oh, I feel that one. That is really bad. That is awful. Dude, everyone from there is getting killed off. Yikes. It's interesting how they're isolating certain sounds now. How would you get Zoe Kravitz back? <laughs> My man. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, that's creepy. Whoa! She just shoved the bullet in his... Her hand is a gun. All the explosions and shit, but that was the one that got me the... I mean, they're doing it just one step at a time, I guess, but you need kind of like massive momentum sweep. You need like a Hail Mary of sorts. That's cool. At least he died believing he was going someplace else. What a great way to weaponize. President stab that guy. Smart. That anticipation skill. This movie looks so expensive. All that concern in his eyes. It's just such a brilliant staging of a cacophony. <laughs> He's even like looking uh, like the amount of time between this and the prequel and you're witnessing this. It's like no wonder it took so much time. This is so much detail. There's still so many people left though. Even if you just took out uh, Joe, right? I'm going to need you to drive. I'll get him out of our way. Don't kill the guitarist. No. 
He's been wonderful. I love how the guitar actually becomes a weapon. <laughs> Take me. Everything feels so real. <laughs> God, yeah. Appreciate how smart of a villain he is. Awesome. I love the amount of attention to detail and the amount of how people can anticipate each other's moves and the amount of assist. Oh no. Remember me. Cool. Whoa! What the fuck? <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was fucking awesome. That's how a Morden Joe dies. <laughs> okay. That was gnarly. Aw, oh, that, that really breaks my heart that she died. When you're across safe, I'll jam the throttle and follow you. Come on! We're nearly at the pass! I think this whole really submerged himself into that role. I feel like there's something I'm missing. What happens when they get it to the pass? That is some strength. Aww. I didn't think I really felt for this relationship, but I guess I do. That was great. Whoa. Clever. Did they take them all out? That was crazy. I was locked in. There were times I forgot that there was this camera on. <laughs> I was really locked into that, man. Holy shit. Why is she making that noise? She's pumping air into her chest cavity. Ooh. She's collapsing her lungs one breath at a time. Ooh. Redemption. Save her. I am so sorry. <sighs> no, I don't. Hey. <laughs> Oh, he cares about her so much. Keep her awake. Before I hold it up, hold it up. My mind's like racing because I'm like, I thought they wanted to do a sequel with her and then she was disappointed this time. My mind's just getting caught up in like behind the scenes facts, which kind of ruins if she's going to die or not. But I mean, they... did she die in this movie? My name is Max. Wow. That's my name. He's so good at playing socially odd people. I also like how Max becomes progressively more polite <laughs> as the movie goes along. <laughs> like even in there's like, no, 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 please hold this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, reveal yourself. I am the road warrior. He's got something. Yucky. It's a Morton Joe. They want Joe and Uh oh. Oh, you war pups. What a cool turn of events. Like, you start off here on the escape, but the goal is to just go back and take. Oh, that's. What a very cool turn of events. <laughs> Water for everyone. Aw, dude. Go it's his own way. I've always wanted to say goodbye like that. Just a cool little nod. Just like a, not even like a, just a, just a little, little subtle nod. Half a nod. Whoa, nipple chills number four. We who wander this wasteland in search of our better selves. The first history. We did it! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> well, there's great practical effects. <laughs> Let me just say what everyone else says.
<laughs> no, 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 man. There's a, that's a lot to dissect. Oh, sweet. Let's talk about it, baby. Yeah. Reject Nation, I am here to talk to you today about something that I value very much, and I hope you will learn to value it too. And if you already do, then I got an amazing recommendation for all of you. Now, many of you guys have been so kind to notice that Sir Gregory over here has been getting in a little bit of a better shape as of late in the past year or so. I mean, I'm just looking at <laughs> Everybody loves the guy who flexes on camera. No one finds that annoying or like they're trying to get attention. I'm only doing it to make a point that I've been taking health and fitness quite serious, mainly because I really like to feel more energetic in a more natural way, helps me focus. I just feel better better overall. And one thing I've really noticed that is very, very important to me is proper hydration. Sometimes you might just casually see me sipping on one of these, no big deal. But sometimes I don't wanna just like fill my body up with so much water before getting on camera and getting some of that water bloat or whatever that might occur. And it's also important to get electrolytes after sweating a bunch because if there's one thing I notice is that after I exercise, do I feel a high from it? Absolutely. But if I don't replenish my body properly, afterwards, I slowly get drained. I feel more foggy minded. I feel more fatigued. And that's why this is something I've already been using. And I am so happy to be partnered with them. It is liquid IV. I've only got three packets left. I need to order more. And what's so great about it is that after using these, I always feel way more refreshed. I feel like I feel more focused. Sometimes I might get a little bit of a head pain. It helps relieve a lot of that. And it's more than just working out. Sometimes you might just be really tired or have an exhaustive day. Like for example, sometimes we're working all day and then we got to shoot a show at midnight or something like that. And I need energy. I need to be live on on camera. And I usually take a hydration formula and liquid IV is a very, very reliable one. So while drinking water is of course very important, liquid IV can provide the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water. That's like efficient. They're of course packed with a lot of essential vitamins. They're vegan, soy free, gluten free, dairy free. You can customize the water amount to your taste. They have a lot of options. And the reason I love this one is because throughout the week, I usually have a no sugar added diet. And this one right here, it's sugar free. So it's perfect for me. So yes, it's great for post night recovery, traveling, maybe having a big night out after you know. So if you want to improve your endurance, you want to improve your overall well-being, you want to be hydrated. It is extremely important to vitality. So to boost your hydration and also boost support for the channel. Would love to stay sponsored with these guys. Considering that we do use these products and we really vouch for them and really do think you would benefit from them. You can go to liquidiv.com and use promo code rejects. Once again, that's liquidiv.com promo code rejects. Remember, it's not a real IV but it sure feels like it. That's comedy gold. All right, Reject Nation. Finally did it. Mad Max Fury Road. I was concerned about a weird thing here. If you listen to us on Apple and Spotify, please rate this video. And by the way, if you're the, the YouTube viewers, the one most people are watching from, we're going to start uploading exclusive audios just to there. So yeah, it's going to be more than just isolating our review section. And, and, and so it would be cool if you guys followed us there. It'd be, it'd be awesome. It's an extension of the channel of Real Rejects, as we all know it. And uh, as I was explaining at the top of this, when I'm baked out of my mind on edible, and uh, the other part is like, it really affected my memory, <laughs> I noticed. There's a reason I had to really dial it back, and I've been getting way more into health. It just sort of kind of improved my brain health in the past uh, couple of years. And... I thought like, oh, you know, I'm sure as I'm watching it, maybe some stuff will come back to me. Nothing was coming back to me at all. <laughs> there's, there's literally not a thing. And then that, it, oh, the only thing that came back to me were stuff I remember from trailers or other imagery that has stood by. Like, uh, it, like the one, the one thing that really flashed to mind was when um, Furiosa got on her knees in the sand. I, like, I didn't know what that was. I don't. I, still, I just watched the movie. And I, I forget. What they they said it several times. The place, the location they were trying to get to. Uh, the, the entire time, her her home. And that was like an image that I remembered. So to me, this did feel like a new experience, a fresh taking. And it surprised me, surprised me quite a bit because I went into this movie mainly just wanting to see the action set pieces, mainly wanting to get, you know, the, the visceral, eclectic, you know, stunt work and cool camera angles and explosions, 
all the juice, all the things that people constantly talk about with this movie. And it delivered. And I'm excited to talk about this movie because it gave me more than that. Quite a bit more that I, I did not imagine would actually be my takeaway with the film. Because while the imagery of some of these characters is quite iconic, I don't really hear about the character traits. You know, when it comes to Immortan Joe or Furiosa, Nux is his name. I think they, they, kept, I think they kept saying the word Nux uh, for Nicholas Holt. Or even, or even Tom Hardy's performance, uh, which I know has been a little bit debatable for some people, as Tom Hardy can be in, in, certain, in certain roles he, he ventures off into. Uh, but he, he, normally it's like the action and the aesthetics and, and such. And then the fact that we're getting a Furiosa movie, I'm like, well, Furiosa must be something of an impactful character. And there's a, a little section in this movie that's like a few minutes long where she starts listing her backstory. And I'm going, OK, I guess it's going to be the Furiosa movie that we're going to see. That's So I wanted to digest some of that information. But some of my takeaways came a, a little bit more in, 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 in those forms. So to get it out of the way. I mean, it's not something you just get out of the way. One of the characters of this movie is the experience. It's kind of a, it sounds like a cheat sheet or a cheat way to, to talk about it, you know, because it's so often, and I've said it myself when it comes to many big blockbuster films, is, yeah, you know, you could watch like big action set pieces. You could watch, you know, uh, uh, fight scenes and whatever, but then you get to a certain point where it just becomes kind of mind-numbing. You know, it loses affect. It loses impact. And one of my my weird concerns, especially with a camera pointed at me, was going, what if people love this so much? Like, what, what if I just start finding it a little bit repetitive? What if I just find it a little bit, like, monotonous, you know? Because, and, and my experience with the action uh, sort of, went like this on my emotional journey of like, wow, you know, a lot of expression in it when, when I was, uh, you know, when I was feeling it. And then as I kept feeling it, I suddenly just started getting more locked in and I was just immersed. Like by the time you get to the finale, it's interesting because most of the, most of the action scenes are all based around, uh, some type of vehicular chase sequence with a variety of weapons and people on poles and flames and, and all kinds of arsenal and hopping around cars and gunshots. It's a variety of weapons. And yet every set piece of when they got distinctly focused on action still felt like they offered something new to every one of them. By the time you get to the the final one, uh, I, I was just in there going like, this is impossible. Like, how could they possibly? I was so hooked into the story and wanting to see if this movie would be able to sell me. Because I'm a demanding audience member. <laughs> I wanted to see if this movie would sell me on whether or not I'm going to be able to buy into this one group of people and their one vehicle being able to take out everyone here and it was constructed so well like the the this story within the action was constructed so well that i you know i i find my i'm here and i'm i'm, I'm showing you guys like what i'm feeling internally you know where i i could be blown away or shocked by something or, or just mesmerized and then i i i was um I was gripped and that grip of the action, which is, it's, it's a rare, I would say kind of the same thing with the John Wick movies where the, one of the characters in, in, in the movies, in the movie like this is, is the action set pieces. They're a character in and of itself because there's so much emotion involved. It's not just, you know, a choreography. There's, a lot that are playing on your senses. It's, it's like a sensory experience. There are times where you can sort of feel the flames on you. Like even if it's like it's the tingle of a subconscious hint of getting of your imagination getting kind of pulled into it. You know, it's not like a 40x experience or something. I know it sounds a little pretentious to say, but whatever. I'm sticking to it. You could feel it, and you're you're learning about these characters via through observation, via through body language, primarily. Now, that being said, sometimes I'll 
give a movie that compliment and then I'll, I'll still be here going, but when there's not like actual obvious action going on, how are those scenes working? And for the most part, I thought a lot of that was surprisingly really good. I thought it was really great. There was, there was one plot line, which I'll probably dive into in, in a little bit, that took a while to grow on me when it came to the characters. Like I wasn't 100% feeling it, but you know, the, the main ones, uh, what they did with Furiosa, what they did with Max, uh, I thought was really interesting. I've seen Road Warrior a couple of times when I was younger. I don't have the most distinct memory of events. It's probably, it's better than how I ever remember being baked out of my mind with Fury Road. Um, I could at least recall a couple of, you know, certain moments and scenes. Uh, but I, I see some differences here for sure between, it's like, you know, Mel Gibson's not like the coolest guy. He barely speaks in, in Road Warrior. Uh, I, I feel like, um, you know, Tom Hardy's is a little bit more unhinged. But so much about what makes the performances work between Charlize Theron and Tom Hardy, who apparently didn't get along on set, if I'm not mistaken, or had a blowout of sorts. I don't really recall what the behind the scenes facts were. What worked so much for me was watching their relationship evolve and how they did so much of that trust via through dialogue. And for a movie where there's subjects here that I'm not the... I'm not, I'm not as educated on these subjects. Well, I'm like, I'm fair. Like I can follow along. Uh, I'm not, I feel like I speaking on this is one of my strengths. I would personally say, but you know, touching on themes of like authoritarianism, uh, the patriarchy to a certain extent, obviously elements of, uh, you know, uh, resources, scarce, resource scarcity, uh, environmentalism. You know, there's a lot of, um, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of, actually, yeah, there's a shit ton of, if I'm not mistaken, like other than Max, every, every guy in this movie is a bad guy, right? Well, my, my phone's playing a random wisecrack video about the clock, clockwork orange. That's weird. I've never seen a clockwork orange either. Must have hit some recommended page, but anyway, um, but, uh, yeah, the, the so with these topics here, cause like you have like a Morton Joe, who totalitarian will be the word for it, rules society with his iron fist. And uh, he's controlling resources and then, you know, the objectification uh, of women as well, like literally keeps them locked in, in a chamber, you know, and to, to breed the next warlords and uh, the fanaticism that takes place in this film as well and how to weaponize uh, people's uh, weaponized ideologies weaponized beliefs where people are willing to sacrifice themselves like the women with the with the children the milking and then the guys are are just blood banks and even to a certain extent right the um, I, I forget the name of whatever nux uh, the kind of character that he is but uh that objectifies them in a certain way with the whole like chrome thing in order to, to sell them on these bigger religious beliefs like there's 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 this power here and there's women are just you know fucking kicking in the door i'm gonna save the goddamn day here and even though all the men are bad like the part of the part of the fun of the movie t to me was watching the relationship of of because of watching max and and furiosa bonding together of how they have to work together and, and there's not much dialogue exchange between them furiosa talks more than than he does but it's it's the two of them working together in order to conquer in order to save the day and i like kind of the open-ended nature of of them riding up like it makes sense to me that max wouldn't go with furiosa in the end there's been the redemption for him obviously there's been that redemption but there's I feel like it's a little bit more realistic that he's he's not quite there yet as a person where he would still ascend with them to there. And leaving off on this note with Furiosa and all the women there, like, can they do any better than what was there before? You'd imagine they would. As, uh, the the women here are, are, are often portrayed like there's there's such a strength that the, the, the women here have at the same time. They they do capture a more a softer, more empathetic. Uh, quality than all the men <laughs> in this movie. So I'd imagine that they would do a better job just simply to 
the 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 ability to see humanity within human beings uh, and I, but I still like how they they have an open endedness about it and so watching elements that you can sort of I would say find the spider web sort of deconstruct where you can sort of pinpoint subjects of things that this movie could potentially be commentating on. Cause like I've seen like Mad Max, I've seen road warrior and then, and then, uh, but when I was a kid watching those, I wasn't like thinking about any of this shit, you know, I'm just like, cool action. Right. I actually thought the first Mad Max, I remember being a kid thinking that shit was boring. At all, but I haven't given it another chance. Um, the really low budget first one with Mel Gibson, but the, the road warrior, I remember thinking it was pretty sweet. I wonder, is that a common opinion? I feel like that'd probably be a common opinion. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, but the, but, but, with this one, it doesn't ever become a movie that's preaching via through dialogue at all. Everything is body language. Everything is action. Like I'm not just talking about action scenes. The way they handle revelations of every sequence was part of my favorite moments of George Miller's direction here, combined with this brilliant editing. I don't know who edited this movie, but my God, the edit... I, I'm acting like I wouldn't know if someone said the editor's name. I wouldn't know. I barely know. Like I honestly, even when it comes to Martin Scorsese, who always works with the same fucking editor, I I'm that's what I know. I know she's the same editor, and I am the asshole who never committed her name to memory. I'm terrible at remembering editors' names. Um, I don't know who edited this movie, but goddamn, is the editing phenomenal in this film? It has such a unique way of doing it because. I don't know if they, how they, I, I'm like watching this and my brain is trying to piece together. Like, how the hell do you possibly construct this? Cause I, I feel like I've been semi conditioned over the past couple of years with, you know, oh yeah, you fix it and pre, you do previs and stuff with the choreography and or yeah, you shoot some shit on green screen and the VFX guys will, will fill it in. And while there's a lot of magic that can happen there, while there's a lot of work, that can happen there when you're seeing this. Well, obviously there is, there has to be CGI involved with a lot of the, especially with elemental, ele, elemental stuff, the sky, you know, certain atmospheric touches. I mean, just downright to certain, some explosions and bodies that are like flying in the camera, or whatever. Like, of course there has to be some CGI elements to there. Uh, at the same time, uh, it, it feels so goddamn practical and you could tell that there's so much stunt work and there's just so many moving parts that I, I, my brain starts to scratch itself thinking like, as, as a person who's completely sober right now. It's like just like scratching itself going, oh, wait, how do you, how do you like piece this together exactly? Cause was there a, a extra coverage and you're trying to figure out that? Cause as much as you're like trying to shoot with in mind of how it ha you're imagined to be edited, you have to fix a lot of this in the editing room. And it also can't feel the, the complaint that you have about like a Transformers movie or something or or that Taken 3 meme that they have where he's like jumping over the fence and there's like 14, it's 17 cuts to it where it, it's it, where you can't keep up. You, you can't keep up with it. And here you're able to follow all of it despite how much of a frenzy it is, despite how manic everything is all the time. And I love the choreography because there's so much smartness within each one of these characters in the fight scenes like with the morden joe his ability to read people anticipate what every character's move is going to be whether it be like i can see them no one knows what they're doing way out there i know exactly where they're going to go or in the heat of the moment no one want to pull a gun on someone or, or anything and he knows how to manipulate they they show that he's more than just this intimidating presence with this scaring breathing apparatus he is actually a smart calculated villain and it's kind of like that for a lot of the characters. A lot of the characters are really good at being able to read each other and anticipate each other's next moves, which makes the game of tops and these fight scenes so engaging to witness. And the amount of assist that people will do, like it feels, you know that, you know what it feels like? It, it feels like they're improvising, and there's there's such a natural flow with the way all of it's going down. I'm a big fan of choreography being nailed down right. And and with a big part of choreography that's important is to not make it feel like it's rehearsed. And for something like this, you got to rehearse the shit out of this. And not one point does it feel rehearsed. You could feel, and a large part isn't due to the actor's performances as well, but the way they capture this really feels like people are improvising along the way uh, in the character decision-making 
I was so impressed with it. And beyond just practical defense stunts and that, cause that's usually what you hear. Right. Uh, but there's so much more uh, intricacies involved with what made it stand out so much. And, and, to to have it hyped up for so long and to take it in, I'm like, this is why because on this is how the, this is how the shit hits you on a more subconscious emotional level uh, beyond just wow it's pretty it, it can hit you in, in these deeper ways because that is how you weave in even though you're not getting like character exposition or shit like that you are getting character emotionality via through what you are witnessing in these action moments. It's like the first half hour, you've, you kind of learned some information about the world motives about, okay, I'm Furiosa's leaving Max captured Nux wants to get to Valhalla, prove his way to a Morden Joe. Morden Joe wants his woman back. You don't really know like too much. It's very sparse information. It's a rather simple story when you think about it with just some, you know, complexities and the details of latching on to a brand new world that they are building up here. Uh, but there's so much in there that gives you the nuance of emotions. And, and that is all in large part to like Furiosa, which surprised the hell out of me with her, with when you, when, when the amount of hype around Furiosa, this was like, you know, the, the, the brutality, the brute, the strength that she exudes. I appreciate how still there was a softness in the way Charlize Theron spoke. And then Max is so damaged and he, he's so like feral. He's got these like very fat, like Mel Gibson would have. Especially Mel Gibson, <laughs> he's got some weird ticks and mannerisms when he talks, right? But but Tom Hardy was was something else. Like that 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 was something else. The way Tom Hardy was, like there was a certain way he talked that I just couldn't quite pinpoint it. And at times it was a little distracting with just how it sounded like he was speaking directly into the mic, like right here. Like it was so clear where everyone else kind of sounded like a reasonable film movie distance. It was always sounded like I could hear him in the booth and and. There was a boom to it, which can be effective, but at times it would sort of uh, audio-wise pull me out. Um, uh, but I still really enjoyed his performance. It's definitely more Furiosa's movie than Max's, but I still love the the dovetail of redemption and hope and survival and resilience that these characters bring together here. And I I also really feel for, I've, I've surprisingly felt for Nux. I, I was convinced they kill off Nicholas Holt early. And for Nux... Uh, the the redemption arc that he gets where he sacrifices himself in the name of love instead of some false ideology was great. And I, I really feel like he submersed himself into that role. Like, I really like Nicholas Holt a lot. It's kind of funny because Nicholas Holt was in the menu with Anya Taylor-Joy and Anya Taylor-Joy's playing Furiosa. Uh, but Nicholas Holt, uh, I, I think, is a great actor. And this one, he, he really embodies the character. And I, I love the just the, the craziness that he has here in a way that was still consistently believable. Excellent work. Uh, actors all around, pretty damn great. I'll say, though, the part that I was having where I thought pacing-wise things would get a little, and it's not, a, it's not most of the movie, but there are times where I did have, like, while I think this movie's like, uh, the one main thing I was crediting was the editing. Of course, I'll shout out insanely great world building with the makeup effects. You know, you could just feel there was so much detail there and they'd never like turn to them and explain what it is. Like you sometimes I'm just looking at other shit that besides what's in the center of the frame, I'm looking at their character and like, wow, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. With, with like the makeup on them that just makes, makes it all just feel more alive and more lived in. And of course the costumes and the production sets, like everything from a filmmaking, level, like this is filmmaking for an action movie. Like, it's, like people often differentiate between what's a movie and what's a film. And this, I'm like, this is, this is both like, this is a film and it's an entertaining ass movie at the same time. So it's, it's a hundred percent, you know, just a film to me. Right. Uh, but the relationship that Nux was forming with redhead girl who looked familiar, I don't know. I just wasn't really feeling it. Like I got it. I get why it was there. It served the purpose of Nux's character arc and his whole the story there. And I was like, I'm, I'm getting the intention here. I'm understanding why it's in the movie. Uh, and, uh, and I like, I like the idea of it, but there was just something about it where I just wasn't connecting emotionally to that. And sometimes with the pacing of the movie, I was getting a little hungry. I gotta be honest with you. I, I should have eaten before. And I'm still pretty hungry. Uh, I was getting a little hungry and, uh, you try to ignore it when you're watching and, and, but 
I found myself um, at times, it's towards maybe past the hour mark. So I don't really want to say that because I, I, I just suddenly get really suckered, like really gripped back into the, the, the drama of just character interactions and wondering what people were going to do. And I, I was, I really loved the, the back and forth between Tom Hardy and, and Furiosa, the way, the way how they just start off completely untrustworthy towards each other and then build trust over time. When they had that first action scene where they were both riding in the front of the car and they were shooting at people to get them like, man, it's so great watching them work together. And the, the trust that just keeps growing stronger and stronger to the point where he can hand her the sniper rifle and they don't even have to say anything to each other. She doesn't have to ask for it in any way. He just kind of knows they can feel it out. Like, and I thought that's such credit to their performances. And to me, that character development just saying so loud, him finding a, a chance at redemption and hope by via helping her and the rest of the women out was so strong to me. Uh, I guess that was just the one little thing that actually, yeah, I thought I'd be adding more than I just, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Huh. I thought I had more to say about that. No, that was the one thing I just didn't kind of click with. Everything else was excellent. And the music, the music is junkie XL, right? I watched this on HBO max or just max and does that thing where if there's no after credits and it just goes to a small box, but uh, I was like uh, past the hour mark of the movie. And I was going, wait a minute. I, b- I believe I, I remember. I remember like, you know, when you're like looking up shit, you're like, this is Junkie XL. I believe this is Junkie XL. It's Junkie XL. Fantastic music to fit the heavy metalness of this world that still feels like attractive. Because <laughs> there's like, you know, there's a lot of people who just hate heavy metal music. So it's not heavy metal music. There's something that feels like apocalyptic, barbaric metal still. Um, very tribal and I, I, I operatic. I loved it. I thought it was so great. It was, it was amazing music with a lot of dread heavy moments. Uh, yeah, it was orchestrated so well. And uh, surprise ending with them coming back around. I, I did not. I, that was the last thing I would have predicted. Them going back to take the Citadel. Never would have uh, thought that. And uh, I, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> what a surprise uh, of a story that is to, to have this like bookend of that, of escaping to now returning to take over when that was never really the objective. But the, the objective is not to just like, I want to take the Citadel because of the Citadel, but it's, it's why the, the resources they have to offer is, is, is why. And um, the, the sharing in the community. So yeah, I thought this was an amazing film. I get why it's been hyped for so long and it's more than just cool action. And that's mainly what I just hear. So uh, it's mainly the talking points I made to say. That's what I thought it was only going to be. But I, I found this way more enriching than I uh, initially expected going in. But I throw the question to all of you. What did you guys think of Mad Max Fury Road? Do you like it just for the action? Uh, what do you think about the characters? Do you want to just see a proper follow-up with Max? Give Tom Hardy another go at this role? Weren't they supposed to do a sequel like Mad Max Wasteland? I, I believe that was one of the original intentions. It's just funny with George Miller because he takes like long extended breaks between them, but then you see what he produces out of it, and you're like, no, take your time because you are a maestro conducting quite the opera here. So take your time. And as long as it becomes a beautiful finished project, like how you do, then yeah, take your time because there's, it's masterclass filmmaking at its finest. And especially to be both, you know, uh, uh, enriching and, and, uh, and so precise and composed, but also entertaining as hell. <laughs> Love it. Thank you guys so much for being here. Leave your thoughts down below. You can subscribe, click that bell. I love what I do love. Re- I mean, that's one of the things though, is like I do this and, and I had the thought early on of like, ah, you know, I've, this is the feeling of why I put it off for so long. Cause I just didn't want to face the fact that I am responsible for robbing myself of the experience of, of, of what happened in the theaters when I went there. And this and, but then I'm like, but this part of the fun of when I'm doing a reaction is like, I can tell you all like, oh, how I felt or what I did when I saw the Immortan Joe face get ripped off. 
But to be able to just like capture, like, I didn't see that coming, but to just capture that moment in time to know that like that raw moment is just here and I could just kind of like share that experience, like the insights and the journey and how I'm absorbing it over. Like there's, there's such a, there is to me, as someone who does like really appreciate the storytelling and the filmmaking of, of, of so much of what we watch, that's why I love doing the reactions and being able to share it with all of you because it's, I, I can not just try to like convey my journey in intended 20 minutes in a, in a talking point. Like I can just let you guys in on the journey that I or someone else here or we are having. And that is, that, that to me is, is just like a precious thing to me as opposed to, you know, it's, it's part of, part of filmmaking, you know, show don't tell. And this movie is a masterclass in show not tell. And so I love being able to show you guys uh, the journey that I'm feeling with the journey of the movie. And now I'm here going, maybe I should just wait for a Furiosa to, to come out. But I, I don't, I do want to, I saw the trailer in IMAX and I was like, holy shit, this movie looks fucking awesome. So I, do, uh, I want to see it. Again. I do want to see it in theaters. But thank you guys so much. And uh, I will see you all soon. Thank you, Reject Nation. Mm-hmm.